hello guys and welcome back by now we have covered everything about number systems just one topic that i missed out to uh, mention was the interconversion from octal to hexadecimal has hexadecimal to octal that means direct conversion well unlike the other conversions we do not have any direct conversion method instead what we first have to do is suppose if you want to convert octal number into hexadecimal then you need to convert it from octal to binary and then binary to hexadecimal so it's a two step process and same goes for hexadecimal to octal conversion in this video we shall learn about assembly language high level language and compilers and interpreters uh, let us first get started with assembly language so assembly language uh, you must already know from your previous knowledge that assembly language is a low level language now assembly language is very much highly dependent on the architecture of of your computer now how that affects the way you code is that when you write a piece of code in some assembly language say suppose x that particular code written in language x is specific to a particular architecture it might work on two or three more architectures but then it is not a general code for different architectures you will have to write different code for example if you have written some code for the intel x85 series then it will not work in the x86 series of microprocessors anything that you write in this assembly language is first converted into machine language and that is done machine language or binary language and that is done by means of an assembler assembler is actually a program that translates your uh, instructions written in assembly language into the binary language the instructions that you write in assembly language are called mnemonics now these instructions generally have three parts the address the opcode and the data now this address is the address of the memory location where your instruction is stored this opcode is the code of what you actually want to perform for example if you want to perform addition then there is a particular code that corresponds to your addition operation if you want to perform subtract then there is a code corresponding to subtract so for different operations that you want to perform there are different codes and finally this is data or operand this is the mm, part of the instruction in which on uh, on which you want to perform that particular operation for example if you want to perform addition then there must be some data on upon which you want to perform addition or there must be two numbers which you should uh, which you would want to add so that is the data or operand part there are also several addressing mode depending upon the type of instruction even these things you shall study in upcoming semesters later on now we go to high level language now this high level language actually has a high degree of abstraction as compared to assembly language in assembly language you can directly interact with the memory of your uh, say your system computer system but in case of high level language you cannot interact directly with the memory for example say uh, we consider one simple instruction in assembly language the instruction is mob a comma b in this case this a is actually a register this b is also a register now what this instruction does is that it copies the content of a into b that means that you are directly dealing with the registers or the computer memory but in case of high level language you cannot do so instead in high level language you have to deal with variables arrays objects etc for which some space will be allocated the space on which you can work upon is restricted some examples of high level language are c c++ java python prolog prolog is a language used for artificial intelligence and other languages you must have heard as well now in this high level language uses compilers and interpreters to compile and execute the code now the main advantage of high level language over low level language is that high level languages or hlls are easier to read write and maintain whereas it becomes very difficult to write codes in assembly language so in this case what happens is when a user wants to develop some application or some program or any software then he can concentrate more on application development rather than uh, worrying about the underlying architecture of the computer now let us see what compilers and interpreters are now this compiler is a computer software that is used to transform computer code into machine understandable code suppose there are two people one speaks in french 
and the other speaks in English. The English speaking person does not understand French and vice versa. So in order to communicate, there must be someone who can who understands both the things and can translate translate the language. That is exactly what a compiler is supposed to be doing. Compiler understands the high level language as well. I mean the human language as well and the machine language. There is a slight difference between what a compiler does and what an interpreter does internally. A compiler converts the entire source code into an object code first which is again stored in a file in an object file and then it is executed but after linking is done. That means when you compile one particular code that code is converted first into an intermediate code that is the object code. Now once this conversion is done you no longer need the actual source file because there is already an intermediate file that is the object code uh, with the compiler and it can directly work upon that object code file. So the need of the source code is eliminated. Then what's the difference between a compiler and an interpreter? That compiler converts the entire source code into an object code first which is stored in a file and then executes it after linking. But in case of an interpreter, the interpreter actually directly executes the source code. There is no conversion from a source code to an object code. Now that uh, we have the knowledge about compilers, let us see how exactly does this compiling of code take space. Now this compilation actually is not a single step process. It is divided into four stages and the four stages are pre-processing, compilation, assembly and linking. What happens in pre-processing is that in this stage all those lines of code which have a hash character are first interpreted by the processor as preprocessor commands. That means uh, you must be knowing that uh, before writing any code you must need to import or rather uh, include some header files in your code. In this preprocessing stage those header files and the macros are first interpreted by the uh, compiler and then these commands form a macro language having its own syntax and semantics. But before doing all this pre-processing, first of all what the compiler does is it removes the comments and it joins the continued lines. You can even print the output of the pre-processing stage. How you do that? I'll just show it to you. Let us first write a simple C code. Hash include stdi.h int main. We pass void to it. Printf hello world. So this is a pretty simple code that we have written and we need to save it. Now what we do is we will compile that code gcc minus e my file name is hello.c now uh, gcc is the command using which you compile your c program now I am including this minus e over here just to see what preprocessing exactly takes place over here in this first step so let us see Yeah, there you go. Over here, we have hundreds of lines of codes, and in this line, it is everything about pre processing. All these lines, what are they doing is this is the C directory, this is where my compiler is installed. Over here, you see there is stdio.h, stdio.h, uh, underscore minzw.h, underscore minzw.h. Now, in this case, what is happening is it is entirely working on the header files or the pre processing stage. Over here, in all these lines of code, what is happening is the compiler is importing everything that has been written in that particular header file. So, that was the pre processing stage. Now the second stage is compilation. This is the second stage of the entire process. Uh, now this compilation, the name compilation given to this is actually a misnomer because even the entire process is known as compiling. But this compilation is actually the only the second stage of this four stage process. Over here what happens is the source code is translated into assembly language code which is specific to the target processor uh, uh, architecture. Now over here the compiler translates your source code into machine language code. If you want to see how that happens then you can see that as well. That is done using 
gcc minus s file name dot c what this will do is it will generate a dot s file so gcc minus s my file name was hello dot c this will actually generate a you see a hello dot s file open with notepad plus plus there you go this is the assembly language code whatever i had written in this particular three or four lines of code that has got translated into this machine language code and this is dependent entirely upon the architecture of my computer maybe you get some different set of code in your computer over here we have the assembly language code but this needs to be translated again into the machine language so in order to do that we have this assembly stage if you want to see what happens in the assembly stage then you can do that as well in order to do that we will just pass gcc minus s hello dot c and it should generate a dot o file that is a dot object file there you go we have this dot o file now this is the entire machine language code which is not at all readable or not at all understandable by a normal human being so in order to understand somewhat what we can do is we have a small command hex dump there you go now this piece of code is the hexadecimal code corresponding to the object code that was generated earlier now even this code is nearly impossible to debug or decode please do note that this hex dump is actually a unix command or a linux command we cannot use it in windows but i am able to use it because i have actually downloaded a binary file that is of nearly 51 kb and even if you want to use it then you'll have to uh, download the same hex dump file which comes in a zip format and you need to paste it to your windows path another equivalent command is uh, you can write od what that will do is if you write od hello.o then instead of translating it into hexadecimal it will translate into uh, octal format and the last stage is linking in this stage what happens is uh, when you write the code or rather when your code is converted into the object code it is completely out of order or most of the part of the code is out of order so in order to properly execute what you uh, actually wrote in your source code the compiler needs to perform this linking process in this linking all the parts of the code are uh, bound together now by default whenever you uh, compile something then in case of windows a a.exe file is generated and in case of linux a.out file is generated but if you want to change it then you need to write it as gcc minus o file name file name dot c for example say gcc minus o i want to give it the name hello dot exe so i have written hello and hello dot c is my source code file so let's run it we have got this hello dot exe file named over here uh, this was hello was the name of the file that we actually wanted but in windows powershell i am somehow not able to get the file executed in a proper manner so i'll run in command prompt let us see hello.exe and there goes the output the output is hello world and that is what we desired for hello world so that is all for this video thank you